Hey there, Chad Bonja here for Ohio University Libraries, and today I'm actually showing you my office to kind of give you an idea of, as far as how I make videos for my business blog. And a lot of people ask me, how do you do that kind of stuff? And so this is actually going to be a video about making videos. So first, a uh, little topic about the, the kind of equipment I use. I'm actually using this guy right here, which is actually a um, old Sanyo Zacti camcorder on a little uh, flexible tripod. You can also use, I've also used this before, this is just a little Canon uh, point and shoot. Uh, you can get these for like, you know, a couple hundred dollars, you know, two, two fifteen, something like that. And they just put on a tripod like that, hit uh, record and, and you're good to go. Uh, you can also use, um, I'm actually recording this with, a, with an, a dedicated camcorder, but you can also use, um, you know, a DSLR if you're, if you're inclined with that or something like a, you know, kind of a high quality super zoom point and shoot kind of camera as well. So. Lots of different choices there as far as what kind of equipment you want to use. If you're just getting started, something like this will work. Uh, the newer work versions of this will record 1080p uh, video, which is a really good quality video. So, so this video is going to kind of walk you through how I uh, shoot my videos uh, in my office for uh, business blog and other educational type videos. Now typically I will start out the video by with a personal appearance on camera. I like that because it gives me uh, gives people uh, to know that who is delivering the video, obviously me. Gives them a little information about my face, who I am, so they see me in the library, see me on campus, they kind of know who I am. So here's how this works. I actually just go over here and start my camera, and you'll see me do this in a second. <clears throat> hey there, Chad Bonja here for Ohio University Libraries. If you're doing any kind of economic research or equity research or looking for information about bonds, historical prices, things like that, or historical prices of a stock index, particularly international stock indexes. Data Stream is a great resource for that, and this video is going to show you just the basics of how you can do use Data Stream to download information to Excel format uh, for your needs. So here's how you use Data Stream. And then I will usually actually give a, in the same clip, I'll just cut it in half, I will actually uh, do a closing deal as well. Hopefully this helps you. Uh, if you need more help about using DataStream, look for the contact link on the business blog. Be glad to help you any way I can. Take care and have a great day. And so that's the part that's done with the camera. And then we're actually going to walk you through how I do a screencast using Screencast-O-Matic. So to record my screen, I actually use a resource called ScreencastOmatic.com. And uh, obviously you're going to record your screen. You need an audio input. Uh, one way to do that is just with a uh, standard webcam. This is just a cheap like $40 Logitech webcam. It works okay, but uh, I do find I have to adjust the sound uh, in Windows Live Movie Maker, kind of dial it down a little bit. Um, and the sound quality is okay. You do get a little bit of echo in here uh, in my office uh, with that sort of thing. Another option that we've been using lately are these, is this Turtle Beach headset. And this is actually like a gaming headset like you would use to play PC games with. And I got this idea because I use this at home on my Xbox. But we use this for um, not only recording videos like screencasts, but also for um, uh, doing webinars. The nice thing about this is that as, as you record yourself or as you speak through it, you can actually hear yourself through the headset. So that's really nice. You don't have to feel like you've got to talk really loud uh, when you're doing a webinar or a video. So these are just Turtle Beach PX21s. It's a really nice resource for, uh, uh, to do video, that sort of thing. So I'll take you into Screencast-O-Matic uh, and show you uh, how I record a video uh, that way. Now, generally, you wouldn't do a camera of a screen like this, but uh, I don't have a way to capture, do a screencast or capture a screencast, so in that way I'm doing a, a camera of capturing a screencast here. So this, here's how you do it. You go to screencast.mac.com. It's a free service. You can actually create an account uh, and pay like 12 bucks a year. Um, that get, gets rid of the watermark. But here's how you do it. You just go and you actually hit record and start talking. Okay, so the easiest way to use DataStream is to open up Excel on the dedicated DataStream terminal in the library. Uh, what you'll do is once you open that up, you'll see a DataStream ribbon up here. So you can click on DataStream there, and that will give you uh, all these options here. So we're going to go in and create a, um, a time series request because we're looking for time se series information, historical pricing, that kind of stuff would be a time series request. So we'll do that and click Start uh, Time Series Request there. So once you're done with your recording, you've got several options of what you want to do with it. Uh, you can upload it straight to uh, YouTube. I'm actually going to do some little bit of editing, uh, just kind of string my, uh, my clip from the camera together with this and Windows Live Movie Maker. So I'm actually going to click on Video File, 
And typically I find uh, in Windows the AVI uh, format will work a little bit better. If you're on a Mac, the MP4 will work a little bit better. So I'm just going to do AVI and then I will, I will save the video. And um, typically what I will do actually is uh, save a folder. Um, uh, I've got a whole directory just called Chad's Video Files and I'm just going to create a new folder and call it Data Stream because that's what this video is about. And uh, save the file as like something like Data Stream uh, screen cast and then click save and it'll export it to uh, my hard drive where I'm then going to bring it into Windows Live Movie Maker to edit. So we have our data stream file on my computer now uh, downloaded from uh, Screencast-O-Matic. Now all we have to do is actually drag my uh, clip, the intro and uh, outro uh, clip that will split in the Windows Live Movie Maker here in just a second um, uh, down to my hard drive and we will we'll go into that video editor and kind of splice together the, the film. So this is Windows Live Movie Maker, just a basic um, uh, video editor. I don't find anything more fancy than uh, what, what this allows me to do. You can also do the same kind of stuff in iMovie or another, another software like that. You don't need Adobe Premiere or even Sony Vegas or Final Cut to do this sort of thing. So all you got to do is drag, um, drag your files onto the uh, on the storyboard there. Uh, it's going to render the video, uh, this video out right here. It's going to take a little time to render that and then once it does that we're able to uh, to edit it and, um, and uh, uh, splice our clips together. So splicing the clips together is usually pretty easy. It just involves playing your video and then basically picking a spot to split it. Once you split it there you can actually delete the clip. I'm just trying to get close enough to... So where here's how you use data stream. Well, see I messed up there so we're going to split that out and then boom and it looks like I, I did this take a couple different times here. Uh, so we're going to split that. Hey there, Chad Barnes so here for High University Library. Listen to myself. You actually have to listen to yourself a little bit there. I'm going to try to get to historical see. equity index pricing. So um, uh, things like that. You want to check out Data Stream. It's a great resource that allows you to get that data that you need and download it into an Excel format. This video shows you the basis of using Data Stream and how to download information that you need in Excel. So pause there, split, and we'll drag this guy down here on the other side. And because this is the end part, we will play it. Oh, oh got my hook. Oh, we want to back up a little bit and split there. Delete. Hope this helps you. If you need more help, look for the contact link on the and we'll I'll be glad to help you any way I can. Take care and have a great day. Stop there. And I don't want myself, we will, we will try to end with my smile here. That's the challenge. Have a great day. Okay. There we go. That's good enough. We will split there and we can delete that. Now the next part here is to add captions. And what you all need to do in Windows 11 Maker is go up here and click on caption. Um, and actually what I like to do, rather than actually typing the same thing out over and over again, I actually have an Evernote um, note that I will show you here that actually has um, what I call video cut and paste. So my caption here is Chad Bonger, Business and Economic Subject Specialist. I'll copy that go back to Windows Live Movie Maker and then click on caption and all I have to do is paste it in there uh, depends on you know where you want it you can actually resize it uh, that sort of thing I like it to not take seven seconds I'm just gonna do three seconds and I like it to fade in and you can preview it hey there Chad Bonger here for high university and Library. that's good enough and then we can go back to my um, um, my note here I'm gonna grab my URL to my website and go over here and kind of scrub to where it says contact business blog. I'll be glad to help you. Uh, went a little too far. Let's see. Contact link. That's good enough. Do a caption. Put that in there. And I like to make that a little bit smaller. So let's do maybe four. Uh, 14 is too small. Let's do maybe 18. We can leave it down here. We can move it up to up here if you wanted to. I'm just going for the sake of consistency. Leave it down at the very bottom down there. And then. We should be good to go. I know this is pretty good, all this content through here, so I'm not really going to edit any of that stuff. Um, so we see I've got a 4 minute 58 second video, which is a little bit long, but data stream is pretty complicated, so, so we'll leave it at that. I'm going to actually, uh, before I forget, just save this. And I'm going to go into my um, Chad's Video Files data stream folder and just call it uh, data stream basics. And then what you can actually do is click on Save Movie to render your video out. And I've actually got a setting for 1280 by 720. Um, 
you can do for high definition, but it's going to do 1080p. And actually, the video recorded we recorded in Screencast on Matic was recorded in 720, so I actually prefer uh, 720p. So I'm going to do 1280 by 720 here, and we'll go back to the data stream. And there's data stream basics, and then we'll click save. And it's going to take a few minutes to render our movie out for us. So we see my mini my video is actually done rendering. Um, just a side note, you can just click the YouTube option. It will render the movie and then upload to YouTube from this interface here. But it actually puts it into a file folder that's not uh, the one I've been working in. So I kind of prefer to keep things a bit more organized, which is why I just do it, uh, do the save movie uh, that way. So you can open your folder, uh, see where it is. And here's our folder there. Um, whoops, missed it. Uh, Data stream basics there, all you have to do. Um, is go to YouTube and let's grab our data stream basics there and it's as simple as dragging it there to start uploading so now as far as titles go I'm not going to call this data stream basics I'm going to call it how to download uh, historical um, economic um, economic company so after some tweaking, I can, uh, off mic here, I actually decided I wanted to be, uh, that my title to be How to Download Economic Equity and Financial Information with Data Stream. I need to fix that, it looks like. Uh, but we'll go back and fix that in a little bit. Um, actually, let's do a little magic there with a space bar. We're good to go. Got a description here. Uh, we want to put some tags in there. We can actually go in and start doing things like finance industry, things like that. Once again, I actually prefer to go back to my, my note here and actually have um, some standard video tags that I use regardless. And so I will put those guys in there, and then I will go in and put in um, finance, we'll do stock, we'll do market, and this is kind of just increases your findability of your, of your video. Um, so we go in and we do um, data stream, uh, things like that. Um, so we have all kinds of information that we do that. We can choose a video thumbnail from here. Um, I'll just do, uh, we'll just um, set that as our thumbnail. And then uh, we can choose a category. Mine's educational. Um, I actually want to do Creative Commons because I feel free to share my stuff and that kind of good stuff. And then we go in and click on, um, and all changes are saved. And then later it's going to be on YouTube, and the magic is there. Uh, it's out there for people to use. We can embed it on our blog, put it, uh, send it out via Twitter, all kinds of good stuff that way. So, so that's how you how you make a quick video. Um, uh, with uh, Screencast Automatic, Windows Live Movie Maker, YouTube, and uh, some sort of camera. So, this video has kind of showed you basically how I do my videos. So, nothing to real fancy to it, and really not too much fancy equipment, and just takes a little bit of practice. I've been doing a little bit of while, doing a while so um, you know, I've kind of got a good workflow, but you may find that you've got a, a other things that work better for you. So, if you've got questions, just leave a comment on this video. I'll try to answer the best way I can. And uh, hopefully uh, it helps you make uh, your own videos. So wish you the best of luck and uh, let me know if I can help you anyway. So take care and good luck to you. Go make some videos.